Well, today's the day. This is no run-of-the-mill vlog for this channel, because today is a very important day in my life. Care to guess why? Well, yes, it is my 22nd birthday, that's awfully kind of you to remember, but no, that's not what makes today so important. Um, yes, December 18th is also the birthday of famous director Steven Spielberg and Soviet revolutionary Joseph Stalin, but I was looking more for an answer as to why December 18th, 2017 is important to me. No, it doesn't have anything to do with oh. Donald Trump. Y'all are terrible guessers, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. Today is the day I'm losing a very dear friend. That's right. Today is the day I get my hair cut. Yay! Wow. Cheering? Really? I know most of y'all didn't like the long hair, but come on, give me a break. This is kind of sad for me. I mean, just look at how long my hair has gotten over the past three years. That's very likely the longest I'll ever grow my hair out in my entire life. It's kind of a big deal to me. Well, anyway, I've gotten a lot of questions from friends, family, and strangers over the past three years as to why I decided to grow my scruffy hair out so much and I don't think I've ever given an adequate and complete answer. So I figured now was as good a time as any to give my dear old friend a proper send-off, pay my respects, and answer these questions. The main reasons I decided to grow my hair out revolve around three main points. The first being that this felt like the only appropriate time in my life that I would be able to do this. Let's break this down by sections of my life, starting at the beginning. When you're young, you don't really get to make too many of your own decisions. If we did, a lot of us would have legally changed our name to certain superheroes, princesses, or other pop culture icons, and have been ill all the time from a severely lacking sugar-only diet. On that same logic, I couldn't exactly be trusted with my own style decisions back then. Starting in fifth grade, I was enrolled in a private school in Huntsville, Alabama called Randolph, and I attended this college preparatory school through graduating high school. As many prep schools do, Randolph had a strict dress code, and in relation to hairstyling, the dress code states, Students must arrive at school well-groomed and clean-shaven, and styles or cuts should not single out or draw attention to individuals or groups of students. This meant hair off the collar and no facial hair, unless you needed it for a character role in a school play, but I wasn't a drama enthusiast, so long hair was out of the question for High School Orion. But hey, come graduation, I just let those locks grow like crazy, right? Wrong. I picked up a job at Publix my senior year of high school in the customer service department, and continued to work there into college, coming home from UAB on certain weekends and holidays to work. And their employee dress code, while not prohibiting modest facial hair, did still have regulations on hair length for male employees. Once the summer of 2015 concluded, I resigned from my job at Publix to work for the chemistry department at UAB, which, to my delight, did not police my hair length and I was free to let my hair grow. While I've had a lot of professional responsibilities in college, this is meant to be a period of life where people can try new things and really find themselves, and so I just went for it, regardless of how other people thought it looked. I mean, I could in theory grow my hair out in the future when I'm a doctor, when I'm hopefully a doctor, but with sanitation concerns and hospital dress codes, it just seems unlikely. This was my time to try it out, and I intended to take advantage of that. But on Valentine's Day, 2016, I made a terrible mistake. See, my hair didn't just go from short to wonderfully long. There were awkward growth stages in between, and one of them really got to me. This one strand of hair kept poking me in the eye over and over and over, and so I got pretty mad about it, and I just went and cut it. Here's some free advice. One, 
don't cut your own hair. Bad idea. Two, if you don't heed my first piece of advice, at least don't cut your own hair when it's wet. When I cut it, it turned out horribly uneven, and when I went to Great Clips to get it evened out, they got a bit... overzealous with the cutting. The front of my hair was super short, while the back was the same length it had been before. Yeah, that's right. I had a mullet. I was faced with a difficult decision. Let it all get cut and start over, or push on through with what hair I had left. And my decision on this takes us to point number two. I not only liked the look of long hair, but it was practical for me too. I have what's called a slight double crown, meaning that my hair grows in two separate spirals at the crown of my head, which makes my hair stick up very easily. So when my hair is short, I often have that awkward alfalfa look going on. With long hair, I never had to worry about that, not to mention I just preferred the look of my hair longer overall. No, I was not a huge fan of the mullet look. No one was. That was a pretty long six months. But I was too stubborn to start all over growing it out. My third and final reason didn't contribute to the initial drive to grow my hair out, but it fueled additional motivation to keep growing it out over the past year. I had never really given any thought to donating my hair, because I simply never thought I would grow hair long enough to donate. But with my longest hair in the back growing over a foot long, this became a real possibility, and I certainly liked the thought of not condemning my hair to death, but rather giving it an opportunity for bringing new life to someone in need. Beautiful Lengths from Pantene is a program that takes hair donations to make wigs to donate to the American Cancer Society Wig Bank, and has donated 42,000 real hair wigs to date. That's a lot of wigs. And each wig goes to women battling cancer, and helps to provide some sense of hope to many of these brave women. It's a great cause, and I wanted to see my hair go to good use. So today, December 18th, 2017, I bought my padded envelope, rubber bands, and zip seal bag. I went to a salon, they put my hair in a ponytail, and they made the cut. I put the hair in the bag, put the bag in the envelope, and mailed a piece of myself, hoping that it would help inspire hope in someone else. And after a few more cuts, a trim, and a shave, I went from looking like this, to looking like this. Goodbye, my friend. May you bring as much happiness to someone else as you brought to me. And with that, all you regulars to the channel know the drill. This vlog is over. Yeah, before I got my hair cut, I let some of my friends style it however they wanted to. Some kind of scary results, but hopefully I'll find it entertaining. If you or a friend are interested in donating a ponytail of your hair, please visit the link in the YouTube description for this video. They've got all the details on their website so you can check and see if your hair will be eligible to donate. It's a really worthy cause, and I'm happy I got the chance to participate.